pediatric trials um, have been in general hindered over the past many, many years because uh, in migraine, because um, there is a high rate of placebo group response, right? So if you give children essentially, you enroll them in the trial, you do the same thing, this group gets sugar pill, this group gets an oral, you know, essentially the active medication. Um, the children who receive the sugar pill often have a very high rate of improvement. That's a good thing in clinical care. When I see a patient in clinical care, quite frankly, I want to get them better with the fewest side effects possible. So if something that's a relatively mild intervention could help, that's wonderful for clinical care. However, for those kids who aren't helped by the first early things we do, we need to be then be able to say, let's move on to these, you know, more aggressive therapies or, or you know, even somewhat standard of care therapies. Um, and that's where we've had a disconnect because in clinical care, we know that if we give a child, for example, amitriptyline or shapiramate, it's often helpful. But our studies of those medications are not better than, essentially don't show any better outcomes compared to placebo. So that has been something we've been wrestling with as a, as a group um, for many years. Um, in the acute medication trials, um, when the triptans were studied, oftentimes with essentially somewhat more interest, more creative study designs, um, things like doing a placebo lead-in or um, a crossover design, those studies essentially showed more benefit compared to when the studies were done in parallel, meaning you just, this one essentially gets sugar pill and this one gets uh, active medication. Um, we're trying to figure out what the best design is for our preventive studies, because obviously, as you know, there's been all these new medications that have come out targeting CGRP, both preventive and acute. And so, figuring out how best to design those studies um, so that we can show benefit is really tricky. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why we think kids may have a higher placebo group response. I mean, one of them, if you think about what's been happening recently, right, all of these new medications are advertised on television. So if you enroll a trial, child into the study, they've heard of the medication. They've seen some star advertise that medication. So their expectation of benefit is really high and trying to temper that so that we don't artificially inflate a positive response for that trial is, is like an interesting sort of nuance. Because for the individual child, you want them better. But from a group perspective, we want to be able to show that the new medication or the, the studied medication is better than placebo so that it moves forward in terms of FDA approvals and insurance approvals and things like that. So we're able to use it for our patients.